Hey babes, welcome back for another Q&A video. This is just carrying off from our last Q&A video where I did not make it very clear beforehand that I was making a Q&A video, so I gave you guys a second chance to ask questions and I'm gonna go back and answer those questions right now. It would really help if I had them up on my screen in front of me before we got started. I have a cocktail with me. This is actually an original recipe and one of the recipes that I've been working on based on plants. So this is <laughs> the Pink Princess Martini. It is a delicious cocktail. It is unfortunately looking very deep red or orangish for you on camera, at least when I checked. It's much more of a sexy, like gay, cosmopolitan pink in person. So quite fitting for the Pink Princess Philodendron. I will leave a recipe in the description below, but it includes some vodka, two ounces, half an ounce of lychee liqueur, a quarter ounce of St. Germain or elderflower liqueur, half an ounce of lemon juice, a quarter ounce, or you could even use a bar spoon depending on how pink you want it to be of hibiscus syrup or grenadine. Specifically, if you use grenadine, it'll probably be even more pink, but I used hibiscus syrup because I also use some hibiscus bitters. I use a company that's not very strong, so I use like four or five bitters, but if you are using a hibiscus bitters that is maybe on the stronger side, I would just go with one or two dashes. Anyway, a fantastic cocktail. Oh, and of course I have it garnished with a cocktail cherry delicious, kind of like a lychee martini, but just a little bit more gay. Lychee martini is already pretty gay, if you ask me, though. With a name like Pink Princess, so could not not be gay. I'm not really positive if a lot of people asked questions. Did not really look beforehand. I might be jumping the gun here. Oh, here's one. Okay. Q&A. Hi, Nick. I'm not so much an alcohol drinker. Do you know a good mocktail recipe? I'd love to hear. Hugs from Lottie. Lot. I'm not positive. That one might be up for interpretation. Um, not really complicated of a mocktail compared to what I've been seeing like all over the internet lately, but I love if I'm just like not going to be having a cocktail and I'm trying to have a little something or other that just tastes delicious. I just like some tart cherry juice with a a splash of club soda, or more so, a splash of tart cherry juice with a good amount of seltzer water or club soda. It's more about the seltzer than the cherry juice, but the, I love tart cherry juice. I'm a sucker for just tart cherries in general. The frozen ones, I love buying them frozen at the store and just sucking them down. They're delicious. But yeah, that's my go-to mocktail. Q&A, if you, this is from Kelly's Hoya. Uh, if you had to start your plant collection over, what 10 plants would you get? Oh, Kelly, I think a 10 might be a lot there for, um, that's like a whole video. <laughs> I'm gonna give you five. How about that? Because I'm already gonna spend way too much time thinking about this. Obviously my Schifflera Nova. It's like literally my favorite houseplant. I would not be willing to not have this ever. I feel very much that I'm going to have this like till the day I die. Hopefully it lives that long. I don't know what the lifespan of these trees are. Maybe not that long, but for a long time at least. I'm also just a sucker for like the lobely philodendrons. My philodendron Florida has always been at the top of my list for a long time. Obviously I would need a Hoya of some sort. If I only had to pick one Hoya, what would I pick though? You know what? Plain old Carnosa. You don't need anything special. Plain old Carnos is perfectly fine. In fact, it's probably much faster growing than many of the other Hoyas. So yeah, I'm perfectly fine with that. Ooh, I need something trailing though. That's like full on trust. Syndapsis, definitely Syndapsis. Probably the smaller leaf Syndapsis. And a staghorn fern because you need a fern on the wall. Honestly, that sounds like a great collection of plants. Now I want to keep going. But no, that's like a, that's a full ass video for me to make in the future. Good idea though. Have I done that before? I don't know. Valerie Gibbs asks, how do you successfully propagate philodendron Brazil? Try multiple times in water, have not gotten any roots. It sounds like that you are probably experiencing some inactive nodes on your plant. Maybe take larger cuttings and submerge more nodes. Oh, here comes the heat. I don't know how loud it is. Maybe just a little bit of background noise. You probably don't hear anything. 
Yeah, it sounds like inactive nodes. I have that happen a lot on some of my aeroids where I take a cutting and it just doesn't root. Fortunately, it's a philodendron Brazil, so it's not the most high ticket plant. Uh, but still, we want success with every plant and I'm not gonna undervalue any plant, so we still want you to have success propagating that philodendron Brazil. But yeah, inactive nodes. That's what I'm, that's what I think I'm reading. All right, D. Grow says, if you were a plant, which one would you be? P.S. Miss seeing Muffin in your videos. Muffin, Muffin, come here. Dootsy, come say hello, you've been summoned. It's not working, I have to go get her. You know, she doesn't last long when I hold her. She doesn't love being held, but we'll see if she will hang out here at all. Hey, sweetie, you've been summoned. People miss you. Hi, sweetie. Oh, she's the sweetest. She just doesn't really jump on this counter very often, which I really appreciate. I don't really want her paws all over the counter, although I don't really eat here. It's not a big deal, but she used to jump all over the counter at the old place. And I wasn't obsessed with that, but it was cute because she would be in my videos all the time. So what was your question? If you were a plant, which one would you be? Oh God. Wow, it has to do with traits. It's not just like a plant. There's a, a reason why I would be a certain plant. I don't know. I feel like nothing exciting. I would totally just be like a ZZ plant, which I still love. Like I said, I'm not trying to undersell any plants, but I'm very easygoing most of the time. I'm very easy to deal with. <laughs> That's for certain. Uh, I wear a lot of plain, not like showy pattern clothes. Like, I guess this has a little something on it, but you know what I mean? You've seen my YouTube videos. I wear a lot of plain solid color clothing. I feel like the ZZ plant is like the solid colored t-shirt of the plant world. And it handles darkness very well. And I spend a lot of time inside. So yeah, honestly, I'm a ZZ plant and there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely not. Hello, Nico asks, what tequilas do you use for your margaritas? My BF hates it, but I know I can change him. I could rant about tequila for a long time. The way that tequila is dealt with in the United States compared to other spirits or most other spirits that we, the base spirits that we buy at the liquor store is crazy. If a tequila doesn't say 100% de agave on it, it's like not a real tequila, or I guess technically it has real tequila in it. By law, it's 51% tequila and the other 49% are fillers, whether it's sugar or like caramel colors or whatever. And that's why so many people, when they're like younger, have bad experiences with tequila because if you buy like bottom shelf tequila, it's not going to be real or 100% de agave. And that's when people are going to be like, I don't drink tequila because it gives me like such bad hangovers and it makes me a different person, blah, 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 blah. It's because it's not real tequila. And it's so unfair because that is not the case for like vodka and gin and spirits like that that are not by law 51% of what they state they are on the bottle. <laughs> They're typically 100% of what they say they are on the bottle. So really any tequila that says 100% day agave on it or made 100% of agave on the bottle, keep an eye out for it. It can still be like 15 to $20, it doesn't matter. Brands specifically that I really like, I purchased a lot of Coralejo, I purchased a lot of Espelon. That's what we used to drink at the bar. That was like our staff choice of tequila back when I was a service industry worker. But I definitely hop around with tequila brands pretty often. Uh, as long as, like I said, it says 100% de agave on the label, I will try it and I will probably like it. And you don't need to spend $50 on a bottle of tequila. I never spend more than $35 on a bottle of tequila and I'm always very happy with what I buy. The most common tequila out there that is a mixed oat tequila or one that, as I was mentioning, is only 51% is Jose Cuervo Especial. So that's usually one I feel like people would probably reach for if they don't know tequila, but they know or have heard brand names before. So avoid that like the plague. Made slash beloved asked, do you have any tips on how to find friends as an adult in the city? Currently living abroad, 30 year old, a little socially anxious and also in the plants, Sarah. Love that, Sarah. Um, I wish I had better tips. You know, I really haven't made a lot of friends since I moved to the city. I came down here for college. I don't know if 
the city, you mean Philadelphia or like other cities? I don't know exactly, pardon. But yeah, I, what would I recommend? Because I really made most of my friends from school and work. And now I really haven't been making friends or haven't really had the opportunity to make new friends since I stopped working at the plant shop. <laughs> so I really wish I had some tips for you. I wish I had some tips myself. I know back when I worked at the plant store, we would occasionally have events. Maybe that's something I would look into, although I'm not really sure if plant stores are doing that anymore, although they should be. Wow, I really wish I had some better tips for you, but I'm very socially anxious myself. I feel like people always think that like influencers or anybody who works on social media is like extremely extroverted. Absolutely not. I am a total introvert. If you think I'm an extrovert, I have you fooled. My locks, my plants asks, do you still have your orbifolia, Calathea orbifolia? I saw it in one of your older videos and she's beautiful. Um, no, I don't have any more. I moved here with it and it was looking fabulous up until I moved here. I don't know if it was the stress or what was it, but it was just like covered in thrips in the past couple months, like going into the winter season. And it was just like, no for me. And I had a lot of sentimental attachment to it. I've had that plant for years. I remember that was like the first time I ever saw a cal or was able to get them the Calathea orbifolias in large pots and stock at the plant store back when I worked there. I was like, I have to bring one home. There's no way. I don't care if I don't have room for it. It is coming home with me. So I really wish that I kept it looking great because it really was looking fantastic, especially for prayer plants. I don't have good luck with prayer plants. However, I did decide to just throw it out. The problem was bad enough with the thrips. And I've been recently seeing like decent sized Calatheas, like at least up to my knees in height. Uh, at the grocery stores, not always, but enough that I know one day I'm gonna walk in the grocery store and I'm gonna see a nice Calathea Orbifolia. It's probably gonna be like $25 or less for what was more than double the price back when I got it. And that will come home with me and fill the void that I have since, that has since formed since losing said Calathea. Christopher Kenyon asks, what are some of your favorite low light plants? I like Aspidistra Milky Way, also like Global Green, Devil's Ivy. I also like to see Blue Blue and the Golden Pohos. Oh boy, we lost track of thought at the end there, didn't we, Christopher? So um, my favorite low light, I'm sorry. That's literally me typing though. <laughs> um, so my favorite low light plants, I mean, I always recommend a good ZZ plant because that's me, apparently. Uh, Dracaenas are something that I would always like heavily push uh, when I was working at the plant store and anybody would come in with like an office space or like an actual office. Specifically, the plain green Dracaenas like Dracaena Janet Craig and Dracaena Reflexa are going to handle the lower light situations better if you're working with some of the more colorful ones or ones that have like white variegation on them. That's going to not be as easy as a low light uh, plant situation. But yeah, for a nice, easy, reliable low light plant, I always recommend a Dracaena. I also am a huge sucker for Chinese evergreens, aglianemas. The green varieties, once again, are the ones that you're probably going to want to keep more in the interior of your spaces. They can be a little finicky at first. I feel like often I would bring them home and they would randomly be like, um, it's too low of light. So maybe keep them closer to the window when you first bring them home. But once they've like settled into your space, you can really pull them back deep into your space. I'd say it's the most like foliage houseplant that you can really push into the darkest corners of your home. Q and A, do you wanna to go to visit? <laughs> I walk right into these. Do you want to visit Chicago and go on a date? Heart, JK, JK, unless, babe, not really the way to ask me out on a date. Um, I really am interested in, <laughs> should I be really answering this after the fact? I'm really interested in going to Chicago. I have really, I visited Chicago before, and I feel like it's on my list of cities that I could really imagine myself living in in the future. I don't plan on moving in the next couple of years. I think sometime in my 30s, I would like to go ahead and try out another city. Chicago's heavily on my radar, like at the top of the list. So maybe give me a couple years, boy. 
Linda asks, how are your LECA plants doing? Because of you, I bought a Discidia russifolia, and since I grow everything in semi-hydro, I convert it to LECA. I'm happy to say it's doing great. I'm happy to hear that. My Discidia russifolia is mounted on a piece of cork bark, and it's also doing fantastically. So I'm happy our Discidia russifolia is doing great. My LECA plants are doing fantastic. The ones I have in my bedroom particularly, which I'm pretty sure the ones I did in my houseplant tips and tricks video where I was transferring stuff to LECA, are doing great. They've really rooted up well. I'm still waiting for, you know, a lot of new growth on them. I've had some new growth here and there, but I feel like once the spring time comes, we're gonna have a lot of new growth. I'm really happy with the way the roots are really working their way into the water. And some of those plants did not have good root systems on them, but they definitely do now. So once we get good roots, then we'll get some good leaves. You know what I'm saying? Alexis Rivers asks, what is your favorite and least favorite genus to grow and why? Ooh. I think the genus that excites me the most is Peperomia because there's just so many. And it's like the plant that I feel like I least expect to see new varieties of. Like I'm always expecting to go to a plant store and see some new Hoya that I've never seen before or see some new philodendron that I've never heard of before. I'm never expecting to walk into a houseplant store and see a new variety of Peperomia. I feel like even if they did pick up popularity, they do not garner the like attention that philodendrons and Hoyas gather. So yeah, that's definitely my favorite one. Even though they're not always the easiest ones to grow, I'm still gonna try Peperomia every single time I find it. I will not pick up every Hoya or every philodendron that I find. One, because typically they're overpriced, but two, they're just not as exciting in my own opinion. My least favorite genus, I think Calathea, because that is like the biggest like bamboozlement of plant growing. Everyone goes into a houseplant store for the first time or like one of the first few times and sees a gorgeous Calathea and brings it home and experience the heartbreak. Your first Stromanthe Triostar, your first Calathea Ornata, you don't get over these things. Or maybe you get over them, but you don't forget. You know what I'm saying? Patty Turrigan asks, has Muffin thought about making her own Instagram account? No. <laughs> It's a very cute idea, but no, Muffin has not had the thought. Neither have I. <laughs> Don't mean to speak for Muffin, but uh, no, I think Muffin uh, is chilling uh, the job-free lifestyle. <laughs> Haley Watson asks, what do you dislike about being a content creator? Also, what is your go-to tequila to make drinks with? Girly, I just answered that too in-depthly, probably, and people probably skipped right over it, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> what do I dislike about being a content creator? I feel like the worst thing about being a content creator is that you think about it, like, all the time, and you're put under a microscope, not so much as, like, celebrities. I'm not a celebrity by any means. But yeah, I was never really cut out to be a content creator, in my own opinion. Like I was talking about earlier, I'm a very introverted person, and this is not, like, a career path that I ever really saw myself in, and I was never, like, a, I want to make YouTube videos, or I want to be an influencer. I never had that thought, even to the point where I found myself being an influencer. I dropped out of college, or I guess dropped out's a harsh word. I left school because I wasn't really like feeling it. And I decided I, you know, very into making cocktails. So in my early twenties, I started working at a bar. And after a couple of years there, it really hit a harsh dead end, like six months before I left. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had been growing plants for three, four years at that point. No more than that, probably like three years and I had a decent collection of houseplants. I would look up houseplant videos on YouTube and I would barely see anything, like literally nothing. So I was just like, let me start making some houseplant videos. I don't know what I'm really talking about. I kind of do, but you know what I mean? I'm still learning. And that was just kind of what I did. And my content is not high quality by any means. I just set up my phone and some lights and I have the microphones, probably the most high tech gear that I have. I'm not like, you know, one of these like cinematic creators. I'm really just here to talk and kind of share my experiences. But yeah, I'm not really cut out for all of the 
social anxiety and the thinking about it constantly part about this. It's not something I see doing my entire life. I don't see myself not doing it anytime soon. But yeah, it's a very stressful job and you might be able to work less hours than most people do, but you're thinking about it more than anybody thinks about their job. At least I think about it way more than I think about any other job I've ever had. That's not an understatement. Oh, I think I'm gonna need a sip after that question. <laughs> Q&A, grow lights, dot, dot, dot. I'm confused. Me too, honey, but I'm learning now that I'm working with Soltech. Um, they definitely have some good resources on their YouTube channel. Not trying to plug whatsoever, but since I'm still learning what I'm talking about, I know Soltech on their YouTube channel can explain a little better about how grow lights work. Uh, ask me in a couple months, okay? Let's return to that one. Katie Pins asks, wonderful to see you back, thank you. Would you consider moving to the UK? I remember you saying your family were British. Yeah, my mom was born in England and all of her family still lives, not all of her family, 90% of her family still lives in England to this day. And I haven't gone back in so long to see them and I would love to. I wouldn't consider moving there, at least I'm saying this at this point in life. I'm sure I've said many other things when I was younger that are not true at this point. I need to go visit England again. Um, my mom moved across the country when I was a teenager, so I didn't really keep in contact with that side of my family, but I'm not like, I'm not estranged to them by any means compared to my dad's side of my family. <laughs> I'm not a fan of them. I will be very open about that. So that is, we're not gonna talk about it, but <laughs> I don't need to be secretive about that. Dalpori. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Q&A, to be honest, we don't care what topics you cover. We just like to hear you talk. The only question, I'm walking into one of these again. <laughs> just stop. The only question I have at the moment is why are you so stinking cute? Thanks, babe. That's sweet of you. That is all the questions that were asked that I saw at least that said the Q&A at the beginning of it on the Q&A video. I'm gonna go back and double check and see if anybody asked any questions after I filmed the Q&A on the video where I cryptically talked about the Q&A. Oh, yes. So V Long asks, do you plan to stay in Philly? Or we just talked about this. Or do you plan to move somewhere sunnier? Oh, we didn't talk about that. <laughs> um, not necessarily sunnier, but yeah, I feel like out of all the cities I've visited, which is not that many, but uh, the two, or the, mm, well, I was gonna say I did like Miami, but you visit Miami. You don't live in Miami. Sorry if you live in Miami. I'm sure living in Miami is great, but I feel like New Yorkers kind of ruined it, uh, <laughs> at least rent-wise, dealing with it here in Philadelphia too. Um, New York and Chicago were at the top of my list, but I feel like Chicago outweighs New York pretty decently at the moment. Need to visit a bunch more before I commit to any other city. And traveling at this point, it's for my 30s. Oh, you also ask, what's your earliest memory of awe or intrigue towards plants? When I was growing up, I gardened with my dad, like fruit and vegetable gardening, and I always had like gardening books. And I would just spend like hours on the couch, like reading the gardening books, probably not retaining any of the information, but just like obsessing over it. And I always wanted to grow houseplants, but we weren't allowed. My parents didn't let us get houseplants. They said the cats would like pee in them or dig them up or I have no idea. Uh, but we had some houseplants out in our pool area as like foliage, like a rubber plant and a croton. And I really enjoyed them, specifically the rubber plant. I thought it was so cool. I loved peeling off the leaf sheaths and seeing a little bit of the rubber come out. Hopefully I wasn't playing with it too much. Did not really know how poisonous it was. But yeah, I guess that's really my earliest memory of being intrigued by houseplants, or yeah, houseplants, but plants in general. I see one or two more, but I think I might have answered them last time. I don't think there's really any more questions. So let's cut it off here. It's the end of our Q&A today. Thank you so much for asking questions. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you spending the time with me.
Plus, it's always nice to have an excuse to have a nice weeknight cocktail, especially when as sexy as this pink princess martini. And delicious. Mm, honestly, it's delicious. I'm not just saying that. <laughs> but yeah, not much else to say other than to follow me on my other platforms if you would like. I won't bore you with it. I'll put it on screen as I always do. But <sighs> until next time, friends.